And of course, I haven't finished yet, have I? I'm next on as well. Right, let's do something else that I do at home. You can imagine what my home's like. I'm going to turn the, turn the volume off because you understand what my home's like on the first part of this video, but it's turned off and the volume's down, so you won't get it now. So, um, th this is um, my robot. Uh, every home should have at least one, and uh, most of them you know, should have a job of like sweeping the floor. Who still sweeps the floor at home? Yeah, I don't. I have a robot that does it. Um, and basically, I have an a iRobot Roomba that is able to move around. But this chap um, is called A1DW. A1 because he's absolutely top. DW because he's a bit of a dimwit because he relies on me to program him. Um, and basically, what he's able to do at the moment is, is navigate around the ground floor of my house fairly autonomously. He's mapped out the ground floor of the house. Uh, I have identified coordinates inside that mapping so I can say, go to the conservatory, go to the hall, go to the playroom, go to the kitchen, and, and he can do that. I'm still working on the beer dispenser for the fridge, but it is a fridge problem as opposed to a robot problem. It can get to the fridge and come back to me. But what I'm really doing is looking to build out um, this next generation of you know, service robotics, um, where the PC comes to you and you're able to converse with the PC, and the PC is then able to tap into all those different internet services that are actually out there, you know, doing the searches for you. When is Doctor Who on? Oh, just record that for me and communicate to my media centre box to do it. Um, or other searches um, that you might want to do, you know, what, what has this time of year, you know, what uh, price is the Mamma Mia DVD on Tesco's, for example, and it could go off and do those sorts of things. So rather than having to sit at a keyboard and work, this thing can actually come to you and you can converse with it and come up with those three pieces. Now, Another example uh, of basically how simple things are becoming, not necessarily easy, but simpler, um, is that we have the Microsoft Robotics Developer Studio, MRDS for short. And that's another free for non-commercial use product that runs down on Microsoft development tools, Visual Studio, it, from Express all the way up to the full package product. <coughs> and it provides really a low barrier of entry for robotics. And I don't just mean robotics with wheels, robotics for automation as well. Anything that's got sensors and actuators is in fact a robotic program. So you've already got robots in your house because you've got a washing machine. You may well have a tumble dryer and you may well have a dishwasher. Um, all of those could be considered robotic applications. Um, but you don't really want a blue screen in your washing machine, do you? But anyway. Um, <laughs> So we have um, a number of different tools that can be brought in to help you here. And I wanted to show one of them pretty quickly. Um, and I'm just going to reach for my Xbox controller and turn it on again before I forget. Now, this is the visual programming environment. And it enables me to harness a whole series of services that know about different technology. Uh, one of those is an X input controller. And the other one is a generic differential drive that I'm just going to pull up. Okay, so a generic differential drive. Well, most mobile robots have two wheels. In fact, here's one I didn't make earlier but was purchased. It's got two wheels, yeah? And it enables it to steer and move forward depending on how you control those two wheels. Well, we've got a generic interface that knows how to drive two-wheeled motor bases, the generic differential drive. So what I'm going to do is just link in an event from my Xbox controller and join it up to the set power control for my robot. And then I'm going to actually um, exploit the fact that these are actually uh, integer flags saying whether the right trigger's been set or the left trigger's been set, because it will set it to one. And hey presto, the motor range is on a value of minus one to one. So it won't go backwards, <coughs> but it can go forwards just by pulling the triggers. Okay, that's pretty cool. So having done that, all I need to do is take the program I've created and point it at some hardware, or in fact, a simulation. So I can go here and say, let's use a configuration file, a manifest file. Let's join it up to the visual simulation engine that we have in Microsoft Robotics Studio. Let's just press run. And uh, you can see my complex naming <laughs> algorithm I apply. And now I'm running up the environment. Now what we're going to see is in fact a um, a simulated world, which was part of that manifest file. You can create your own simulated worlds, um, and so you can design this. It's based on XNA technology, and it's all .NET, so you're familiar with it. So by pulling my left and right trigger, I can indeed make my emulated iRobot create drive. And then comes the fun bit, because being a physics-enabled environment means that I can carefully align to cause maximum chaos. Boof. 
and hey presto, it hits the capsule, and the capsule falls. There you go, fantastic. So all sorts of um, physics, and, and, and this is a big world. You know, you can create an enormous world for your robot to explore. And yes, we have four-wheel drive vehicles and all sorts of things. In fact, we have a challenge on at the moment from Robochamps.com. Have you heard of the DARPA Urban Grand Challenge? Robotic cars driving around normal roads, well, private roads. But anyway, we have a simulation of a number of city blocks with simulated traffic, simulated uh, traffic control systems, traffic lights, etc., and you have to program your four-wheel drive with many sensors, stereo vision, laser range finding, etc., around the area. And you could actually win um, a four-wheel drive car of your own. Now, just for the finale of, of this, I'm going to jump here, remove this configuration, but import another configuration, because it would be unfair to have a willing audience and a real robot and not use it. So I'm going to um, press the on button, and I'm going to lob it over here so people can see. So he's just burped. That's good. Uh, I just need to connect. And I know he's on port 40. So we just wait for the chirp from him. Go on. Oh, go on. Well, there we go. And hey, presto. <laughs> now, the, ro the application, of course, is running on my um, PC, but he's uh, connecting to my PC via Bluetooth. Um, so essentially this is an example of where the brains can sit remote from the device. And in fact, Robotic Studio is built with this idea of services, as I've mentioned, uh, fronting different um, pieces of hardware. And those services don't have to run on the same computing device. They can be scattered across your home network. Yes, your house is a grid computer, really. And with robotic services, you can run up different services on different machines and uh, provide that functionality. So my robot, for example, the A1DW, it has a dual core processor on it now, but if I want to do some heavyweight image analysis, I can take the web camera feed off the robot and run the analysis on a desktop and pass back the results, yeah? Um, and therefore, my robot seems more responsive um, and is able to do more sophisticated things than just its hardware allows it to do. Anyway, I shall bring that to the side so nobody crashes upon it. Excellent, there we go. And uh, bring that piece just to a close. So.